Jay Scott here. Thanks for checking out this video of me building my cedar strip canoe. I took on this project last summer and recently decided to edit down that uh, two hours worth of footage into a much shorter condensed video. Once again, I'd like to thank my dad for his help on this project and Total Boat for sponsoring it. Down in the description, there will be links to each of the videos that made up the full video if you want to watch those. Hope you enjoy. The project started by making a trip to the local cedar mill. Once they were dry enough, each board went through the planer to get a uniform thickness of 3 quarter inches. A few passes on the joiner left each board with a straight square edge. Then onto the table saw to rip these boards down to quarter inch strips. All 199 strips made two passes on the router table for the bead and cove profile. The key to shaping the canoe are the station molds. I started by rough cutting 3 quarter inch plywood to the various sizes needed. I made mine half the mold and will be screwed together later. With these cut, I used the plans from Bear Mountain Boat to trace the outline. The canoe I'm building is the 15 foot Bob Special. With all the halves screwed together, I moved on to the bandsaw to cut these to shape. Then finally combine the halves to make the full station molds needed for the build. I then moved on to cutting the parts for the strong back. All the pieces were called out on the plans from Bear Mountain Boats. With lumber prices being so high, I used 3 quarter inch OSB instead of plywood for this part of the build. With all the pieces cut, it was time for assembly. It was great to have my dad on hand to help, and at this point it became a father-son project. The strong back was now ready to be marked for the station mold placement. We snapped the center line, then screwed down 2x2s, two and then screwed the molds to those. I added painter's tape so when I'm gluing the strips, they won't stick to the molds. With all the prep work now complete, the actual canoe build begins. The first strip is stapled to the station molds at the shear line. Since I wasn't able to get 16 foot material, it requires a scarf joint to make the 15 foot canoe. I alternated the joints for the center to one third sections to increase the strength. The process continues with adding each strip, gluing in place, and clamping them tight. I chose to limit the staple holes by clamping with L shaped supports. If you have watched other canoe builds, you will notice I did not go with the laminated stems. I chose instead to weave the end of each row. This was mostly for aesthetics. As I reached the center of the canoe, I worked one side over to the center line, then cut that back, then next filled in the other side. The planking was wrapped up with the whiskey plank, which is a boat building tradition. I heard from others this would be the step that makes you want to give up, and that couldn't be more true. I marked the shear line to each end and cut to shape. Many hours were spent using the spoke shave on this step. At this point, I wish I had done a better job routing the cove and beads and also with the glue up. There were a lot of small imperfections that needed to be filled. I mixed up total boat epoxy with some sanding dust and spread this all over, 
which then required a ton more sanding. I should have only used where needed. That was a lesson learned. This was the step I was scared of the most. I had never messed with epoxy or fiberglass and didn't want to ruin the hours of work that had led up to this step. After lots of questions to Total Boat, we took a Friday off work and went for it. Thanks to Total Boat for sponsoring and providing their high performance epoxy for this build. We rolled out the cloth and got it smooth, then started mixing and applying. We quickly found our rhythm and by late afternoon had completed three coats. Once it had fully cured, I cut the cloth off below the shear line and flipped it over. If this step was bad on the outside, it was 10 times worse on the inside. Working into the tight stems was a challenge for sure. The purpose of the bulkheads is to hide the inner stems, which were hard to sand smooth. I glued up some cedar and poplar, and once dry, ran through the planer, Resawed on the bandsaw, then through the drum sander, before finishing off with the orbital sander. Very similar to the outer hull, the cloth was laid in place and smoothed out. But unlike the outer hull, excess epoxy doesn't drip off, so lots of extra squeegeeing was needed. Getting the cloth to lay smooth in the stems took some work, but we figured it out. I really wanted to focus on some extra details since I plan to have this canoe forever. I made some poplar veneer on the planer and drum sander, then cut the logo out with the laser. Two smaller logos were added near the stern and a large one in the center and applied with the same epoxy. This started by shaping each bulkhead to fit snug and about a foot from the end of the canoe. I then applied fiberglass cloth to the back to add strength and help hold it in place. Another piece of cloth was added to the front and epoxied in place. I then applied a final coat of epoxy to the inner hull. There are a lot of commercially made seats available. But being a glutton for punishment, I wanted to make every possible piece on this canoe. I started with a piece of 8 quarter ash that was flattened and squared on the joiner. Then through the planer to get an even thickness and the table saw to rip to the needed widths. Over to the miter saw to cut the pieces to length, then sand it smooth with Ned Sanders. I marked the placement and then used the Festool Domino to align the four pieces for each frame and epoxy together. Once dry, a series of holes were drilled, which will be used to weave the seats. Then all the edges were rounded over with the router. The gunnels are made up of an inner and outer piece on each side. I started by running this ash through the joiner, then ripped long strips in the table saw. A rabbit was made on the edge of the inner gunnels so that it would overlap the edge of the cedar. The inner gunnel were fitted and attached with epoxy. The pieces I had were 12 foot long, so they required a scarf joint just like the cedar strips. I cut some plugs that will be used to cover the screw heads later. I prepped the outer gunnels by rounding over the edges then countersunk holes to hide the screws used to attach to the inner gunnel. With the epoxy cured on the inner gunnel, it was time to add the outer gunnel with epoxy and screws. I made a mistake here and should have done a better job wiping up the excess epoxy. I ended up with a lot of extra sanding, 
I wrapped up this step by installing the plugs to cover those screw heads. The deck plates are used to cover the opening between the stem and the bulkhead. They also tie the gunnels together for extra strength. I used a couple pieces of rainbow poplar, cut them to shape, and then epoxied into place. This piece of ash was left over from milling the seat frames. I used a pattern to draw the shape, then rough cut with the bandsaw. With a yoke clamped into my bench vise, I began the final shaping with a spoke shape and a rasp, then sanded smooth. Then sealed it with a couple coats of Total Boat Lust Varnish. With the varnish dry, it was time to install the yoke. I marked the center, then using the domino, cut slots to align the yoke before adding screws through the gunnels. Using a hand plane, the plugs were trimmed flush. I then sanded the epoxy so the varnish would get a good bite. All the trim work was sanded and a final round over with the router. We then flipped the canoe over and sanded the outer hull as well. Excitement was building now that the canoe was almost complete. We just needed multiple coats of Total Boat's Lust Varnish to protect the epoxy from UV damage. I sprayed the first few coats with my Home Right sprayer and then brushed the last couple for a smooth finish. This was an interesting step in the project. I had never weaved any type of seat before. The process isn't hard, but you have to really pay attention. If you mess up and miss your over or under, then you get to pull that piece out and reweave. There was definitely a sense of accomplishment once both seats were done. With the varnish dry, it was time to install the seats. I prepped a couple ash spacers for the stainless steel bolts to go through. Figuring out how much and what angle to cut the seat is tricky. Screw this up and you're making new seats. With the frames cut down, it's time to drill holes through the top of the gunnels for the bolts to pass through. I then attached a stainless steel loop on each deck plate to attach a line if needed. As a surprise to my dad, I named the canoe Irma, after my grandmother that passed away the summer before. I made cedar veneer and cut the letters with the laser. They were put in place with epoxy, then varnished over. Here is the completed build on a sunny afternoon in my backyard. Thanks for watching and I hope this inspires you to take on something similar.